Get yourself trained in being spirit aware. Be more aware of the spiritual realm because all the communication that will take place in your marriage is a spiritual marriage. It's in the spiritual realm. Previously on Fresh Dew. He was the creator. He's the one who put the patent and he said, marriage is between a man who my yatsa and a woman who my banner. This is the pronoun for a banner and this is the pronoun for a yatsa. What is it that makes a church wedding spiritual? That it happened in church? Where in the Bible did they say that the bride must wear white? Some of you fornicate to the day before your wedding. Lie to the premarital counselors, but your white is whiter than snow. Some churches, you go down born, you go down carry children, but you did not have that white wedding. And you will see the woman with her five children wear a white gown so that she has had a, who said it? What is it in having a white wedding? Well, show me the chapter and verse. Show me the chapter and verse that say you must marry in church. Breaking news, you don't have to wed in church. For church, for you to have a spiritual wedding. Let me come to this side. Or some young men here are praising God. They're thinking of their, their money. <laughs> Pastor, say it, say it. We just go to the garden, have a picnic. <laughs> eh? A very big cow. We are killing it. The blood is everywhere. <laughs> you don't have to go to church to have a spiritual wedding. Let me come to the middle. Because some of you are still sweating. You don't have to go to church. Yes, mommy, you are watching me. I said it. My mother is watching. Yes. You don't have to go to church to have a spiritual wedding. So what makes a wedding spiritual? If these things we're about to discuss are there, and you go to church beautiful. I went to church. Pastor Charles joined us. I'm so proud of that legacy. We are couple 0001 in this church. I'm grateful to God for it. We wrote our vows with him. That's the vows you're all using now. I love that legacy. But that wasn't what made our wedding spiritual. So if these things are there, then ah, go to church. Why? What better place? But don't exclude these things we're about to look at. And then now go to church. Listen, and think going to church will now spiritualize your wedding. It doesn't. Number one, God who originated marriage is a spirit. So if God is involved, that's the first step to your wedding being spiritual. You can go to the biggest cathedral and the mightiest church and have the biggest bishop join you. If God is not involved in your union, that marriage is not spiritual. God is spirit. John 4, 24. So in a truly spiritual marriage, number one, the participants must acknowledge that God is a spirit. That means that in a spiritual marriage, the primary interaction the couple have with God is not in the physical realm, 
It's not in the emotional realm. It's in the spiritual realm. Because God is spirit. If the spiritual realm, you're a stranger to it, you cannot conduct a spiritual wedding. How will you, when God is spirit? Which takes us to number two. In a truly spiritual marriage, the participants must themselves have living spirits born again in Christ. Let us make man in our own image, in the image of God. He created him. He created them. Let them have dominion. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. What does that tell you? God saw them as one spirit, one unit. Let us make man in our image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them as one. Which means that God, listen, conducted marriage between two living spirits that were like him. So if your spirit is dead, which means if 2 Corinthians 5.17 has not happened to you, I don't care if your dress is white, I don't care if the bishop of your diocese wedded you, you are not conducting a spiritual marriage because God is spirit and you must be living spirit. And the way you become living spirit is very man being Christ. He's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What becomes new is your spirit. So without the born again experience, without getting salvation, and we're going to look at that further, you cannot conduct a spiritual marriage. If those things are not there, you cannot. So one, in a truly spiritual marriage, the two participants must acknowledge that God is spirit and the way he, he, he relates with you is in the spiritual realm. Second of all, you must acknowledge that you have a living spirit. My spirit is alive. I'm aware of it. I'm confident about it. If you are not as a single, you should not even be thinking about getting married. And thirdly, Romans 8.14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So not only do you acknowledge that God is spirit, not only are you also spirit and born again, you must be spirit aware. That means you too must be a spirit dancer. The best preparation for marriage for those who are singles are these three things. All the shifters are young people listening to me. This is what you need to do. Get yourself trained in being spirit aware. Be more aware of the spiritual realm because all the communication that will take place in your marriage if it's a spiritual marriage. It's in the spiritual realm. The way you will solve problems in your marriage is in the spiritual realm. The time, the time I had a, a, a conversation or something with my husband, and I wanted him to see something, and he was seeing something else. And it was very important to me that he saw and said what I wanted him to see. But you cannot manipulate my husband, and I don't know how to manipulate. And I did what most women do. I started feeling very sorry for myself. Very, very sorry for myself. One night I got out of bed. He was still sleeping. He didn't even know. I got out of bed. I entered my closet. And I sat down on the floor. And I started crying. Uh, I don't know why I can't even just see this thing. I don't know, Lord. I mean, you know when you say, Jesus, say, shut up. I was on the floor in my closet crying. So what are you doing here now? I heard him clearly. My friend gets up from there. I said, but don't you understand? I've been trying to explain to you. And I said, keep quiet. So what do I do? You know what to do. So from sitting on the floor and crying, I turned. And my knees hit the ground. And I put my head on, my, on the stool in my closet. And I said, pray. I dragged him before Jesus. That's what happened. <laughs> I brought him. I fired prayer. I must have prayed for like two hours. I spoke the word. I 
told the Holy Spirit to tell him that thing. Wanted him to see it. I knew it was right. I wanted him to see it. And my husband hears the Holy Spirit more than he will hear me. Thank God. By the time I fired that prayer, I cleaned my face and I went to bed. The next day he traveled. Holy Spirit did not even let him land. By himself, he called me. Yeah, we need to talk about something later in the evening. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> they are fired, you have <laughs> in my mind. I had to be a Christian. I said, Really? You want us to talk? <laughs> what was happening? Conversation was happening in the spiritual realm. We we're both spirit aware. He didn't, he slept throughout that prayer time. I came out of my closet, entered the bed. I went, he didn't know what happened. But he's spirit aware. And I was spirit aware to hear Jesus tell me, get out of that realm, my friend. Who are you sitting on the floor and crying for? Is that what you tell your people? But they don't know what I'm going through. Shut up. Going through what? Just because one situation didn't go the way you wanted. That was it. He came back and in fact, on the phone, we said the conversation. Exactly what I wanted him to see and say. He said, I just had a prompt from the Holy Spirit that he thinks. I said, I think so too. That's a spiritual marriage. That's a spiritual marriage. We had a threefold call. But you see the important thing? He was spirit aware. I was spirit aware. Those are the things we thank God we learned over time. We didn't know them at the beginning. Now you have the advantage of attending seminars like this before you get married. And those of you who are married, you now know what to do. Those are the things that matter. We can't spend all our time thinking where you were, how you were. Some churches, they tell you, I want the biggest pastor to be present because the greater the pastor that prays for you, the more spiritual your marriage will be. What, what is that? Or you come, ah, Pastor Kelly didn't come for my wedding. In the, now, now you know I don't come. But in the, that time I was transiting. Some of you be getting angry that I sent an assistant pastor because your wedding will be more spiritual. No. You are the determinant of how spiritual your wedding will be. Not the location, not the dressing, not the pastor who joins you. You are the determining factor. And that's why now these days young people can go for what they call destination weddings. And some of us old school, we're frowning at them. As long as they are both passing the spiritual test and they get his pastor who is spiritual to join them, destination wedding is also spiritual. You don't have to be in church. They can be on an island somewhere. I traveled to Arizona recently for my friend's daughter's wedding in the middle of the desert of America. It was a very spiritual wedding. But both were born again and they had a minister there. What matters most are these things that matter. If you're not wedding in church, beautiful. Because these things are there. Amen. I didn't know I would spend this much time on this. I think this was important. Amen. Okay. So in a, tr- in a truly spiritual marriage, I said three things. Both participants must agree that God is spirit. Yeah? Two, they must have living spirits. And three, they must be spirit aware. Finally, we forget. We're looking at fi- five things we forget. We forget that the marriage covenant is actually one of God's mysteries. The marriage covenant is one of God's mysteries. Are you still with me? Still away getting this? The marriage covenant is one of God's mysteries. Ephesians 5, 31. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. There are actually two mysteries Paul is talking about here. Paul is talking about the mystery of Christ and the church, but he's saying because of the mystery of Christ and the church, I'm letting you know that the marriage between a man and a woman in Christ is also a mystery. Are you following me? Hello? Let me read it from the TPT. Marriage is the beautiful design of the Almighty, a great and sacred mystery, meant to be a vivid example of Christ.
and the church. That is why the marriage covenant is under so much attack in these last days. Because a marriage union that is spiritual is actually preaching the gospel. You're reflecting Christ and the church. Satan doesn't like that. Every spiritual marriage comes under attack. Everyone. But when you understand why, you take your eyes off your spouse, fighting your spouse, and you fight the one, not the human being, anybody, fight the spirit that's after your marriage. Because marriage is a vivid example. I'm sure Mina and Dajima have gone on a different attacks in their marriage. But they're standing today because they knew who to fight and not fight themselves. Every spiritual marriage has. But you must understand that we are meant to be a vivid example of Christ and the church. So what is a mystery? It says here it's a great mystery. A great mystery is a megas musterion. We know what megas means. Big, remarkable, out of the ordinary. So the marriage union is a megas musterion, just like Christ and the church. That word musterion, it's a very interesting word. Because of time, I will not read everything I have about Mosterion. I will just try to explain it. When you hear mystery, what, do you, what comes to mind in the English language? Something is a mystery. It means something that is hidden and nobody knows, right? Huh? That's what a mystery mean, it means. You watch movies that are mysteries. What, what, what are they saying? They're things that nobody knows about. So the mystery in English gives the idea of something covered and something hidden. But Mousterion is not like that. Mousterion actually gives an example of something that was once hidden, but now is revealed. So the Mousterion for us is open. But the word mystery in English, it's covered. But in the Greek, it's not covered anymore. Something that was once hidden, but is now open. So once you hear Mysterion, it already tells you that thing is not hidden. Now this is where, and that's a good car about to die here. This is where a lot of ministers hold the church in bondage. Because a lot of ministers preach the mystery of the seed. The mystery of the anointing oil. The mystery of the mantle. The mystery, what are they saying? There are mysteries in those things that only them understand. And they hold such mysteries. So you stay connected to me and I will reveal, you see the manifestation. They will even reveal to you. It's not true. They are using mystery there, listen, in the English sense of the word, which is something that is a mystery that is hidden. But that is not the way God uses the word mysterio. Mysterio means if you are listening within the cult or within the group, it's open to you. So the way to know the mysterio is not to tie yourself to any man of God. It's to enter the group. And unlike cults that is narrow, a few people can enter. The mysterion that God talks about is open to all. Christ made it open to all. Everybody who is here born again, we are all part of that group. And in that group, the mystery has been revealed to us. This mega mysterion is not hidden. So God is telling us that we need to know that Christ and the church is a mystery that has been revealed and the marriage union is a mystery that has been revealed. But it has been revealed to those within the group. And let's find out who are those within the group that it has been revealed to. Let me read this. Let me read this from, from a, a, a lexicon. Just listen. There is a serious problem involved, listen, just, just listen, in translating musterio by a word which is equivalent to the English expression, 
mystery. For this term in English refers to a secret which people have tried to uncover, but they have failed to understand. In many instances, musterio is translated by a phrase meaning that which was not known before, implying that it has now been known and been revealed to some people. Amen. And that's another translation. And that comment you put it this way. The mystery is not in the fact that they are, listen, marriage is a mega musterio. The mystery is not in the fact that they are difficult of interpretation. No. They are just impossible of interpretation until their meaning is revealed. So without the meaning being revealed by someone and to someone, follow me, without the meaning being revealed by someone and to someone, it's impossible to understand the mystery. But once someone reveals it to someone and we find who those two someones are, then the mystery is revealed. Next on Fresh Dew. Get into the spirit realm. Learn to pray. Pray for your spouse. Pray for yourself. Pray for your spouse to be before you even meet him or meet her. That's how to prepare. That's how to restore your marriage. Pray. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today, he's waiting for you with arms open wide. And he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew which is 0700-3737-4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234-700-3737-4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. 
You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.